Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Accidental Entrepreneur. I'm Mitch Beinhacker, your host. We have a very unique guest who's become a good friend of mine to talk to us today about music that you can use on your podcast and videos for your business and so forth. Um, before we get started, though, I want to remind you, if you're listening on your favorite platform, be sure to uh, give us a five-star review. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and subscribe to the channel and like the video so we can keep bringing you good content and good conversations like my one today. So Howie, I want to welcome you. Howie Moscovich from Made to Order Music is joining us, and he's going to tell a story. Howie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Michael. Okay, so maybe you want to go back to talk about, you know, kind of where you're from, where you grew up, your interest in music, and how you got to, to where you are. We'll take it through that way. we got a good 45 minutes to an hour. Sure. Uh, I've been doing music since I was four years old. And, uh, okay. <laughs> so it started with piano lessons, et cetera. I ended up being guitar lessons because I wanted to get into bands and be cool. And uh, ended up going to music school. And I ended up working with lots of different bands and writing songs, et cetera, for them. And uh, worked from going from Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada to Toronto for a long time and doing a lot of different music there. And uh, somewhere along the line, maybe about 13 or 14 years ago, I heard that Nashville, Tennessee was like the Olympics of songwriting. And so okay. I went down it there. is, right? Yeah. And it is, kind of. And so I went down there. Uh, maybe for three years, three times a year, and started meeting people there. And eventually publishers said, hey, we can get you in if you do this very difficult process of coming through and getting visas, work visas. So I went back home and spent about a year and a half getting my first O-1 visa and uh -huh. came, came here uh, eventually in 2011 and mm -hmm. ended up getting four visas and eventually got my green card last year. So uh, very proud. Oh, of that. okay. How long did that take? That whole process. Well, the process of getting the green. Each of those were three year uh, you know, uh, visas. Oh, took a while. Uh, but the green, but the green card, I only started to do after I got the fourth visa. And um, somebody said, I, you know, I thought it was going to be more difficult than it is because there's very high standards as far as this particular, uh, you know, O1 visa is concerned. And you know, it's why would you want to have another? guitar player, producer, writer, you know, in, right. in Nashville. I don't think they look at it that way, yeah. So they don't look at that way. So you're basically going through um, Homeland Security and having to prove yourself every time. Right, right, right. But and do they give preference to Canadian citizens? I mean, we're just border countries, right? We're not, we're like brother and sister. Somewhat, but I mean, it's pretty <laughs> much, it's pretty much like, you know, a, a, a definite uh, difficulty process so it's the same it as was, if you're coming yeah. from overseas versus here yeah. Then, yeah exactly so anyway so you know i had all kinds of people who had who i was working with who had grammys and uh, academy awards and stuff like that who i you know, do production with and write with and they all were very kind and wrote letters on my behalf and um, you know continuously wrote letters on my behalf and, ah i see uh, you know i kind of used their fame to uh to help me get through right the, the, the so, that's, so when uh, when was that when did you get to nashville then with your full pre I got, 2011 was when i came here and i lived here for you know, about 10 and a half years and finally got the green card last year so i've been oh here so just recently but but you've yeah. been here since 2011 yeah so i'm almost coming up on 12 years in, in general okay and and you've always been a choreographer for you know a not a choreographer a writer? Yes. Composer? I mean, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, thought that I was going to do music for film and for television, uh -huh. and cop shows. I thought that would be perfect for me, putting together both your, um, you know, my my interest in classical and jazz and rock and funk music, et cetera, right. and do all of that. But it ended up being, like I said, working in bands that did all kinds of different music. And then coming down here, just working with all kinds of different artists, pretty much every single style of pop music, you know, including hip hop and R and B and dance and rock and jazz, et cetera. Like, and so are you working with artists that might write their own lyrics, but they need to put it to music or both? I usually write with people, both. I mean, but most often when I'm, you know, that's my other company. Uh, my made to order company is particularly for businesses. Et cetera. Right, that's right. That's only started in the last two and a half, three years. Uh, the other one is, um, you know, meant to, I, I work with publishers and with record companies, et cetera, and work with their artists. And I still am doing that. 
but yeah, this is a new venture that's um, you know broadening my horizons. Sure, now you're a real entrepreneur. And, and yes, and also it's similar process. When I work with an artist, I have to ask the psychiatric questions of um, you know how does this make you feel, and what kind of songs do we want to write. I mean, when I'm working with a company and I'm talking about their core values and getting down to how, you know, who's our target art audience? Right. How do we want to represent ourselves and what's the best way to do that? And, you know, of course, them also putting in, you know, somebody's going to come to me and they have a particular style of music that they're already doing. And I may, you know, this is with the artists and I may suggest that, you know, I hear your voice and you can do something else. The yeah. same way with a company, we can say, well, this is what you've been doing so far. Maybe we can do something different or do something that's new, but the same, you know, the same old, same old. Right. And, uh, they may already have with the company, you know, uh, branding slogans and stuff that are already in existence. Right. And so I can either use those in an entirely new way or uh, come up with something new. If I'm writing a song that has lyrics for them, then they're not only getting a song, but they're getting these lyrics that can be used in their written, you know, any of them. Right, uh, incorporated. I, th I think yeah. people don't realize that music can be a logo, that there are such things as sonic logos. There's sounds that we recognize. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Right, exactly. I mean, those are things that, like, I mean, so, you know, when I do the piece, if it's a two and a half, three minute song, that's something that can be used, you know, at your annual meeting or something or if you're also a keynote speaker you come out on stage and you've got right. this you know piece of music that explains all this stuff in a certain way but uh, i can cut it up into four other pieces so that the you know the i'm doing something for sportel monica it's happening in october um, got it and, uh, he, and so you know a big media thing for sports uh, people from around the world, you know, broadcasters and channels, et cetera, as well as their managers and the athletes. So I'm calling it the biggest, the best. And uh, so the song's all about that. And I'll have a whole song with uh, this female vocalist and a rapper uh -huh. in, the, in the middle of it. But I will chop it up. And the one little part, you know, I'm not the singer, but the biggest, the best is like, you know, the hook in the chorus. Right. And and so I'm going to chop up a little tiny two second piece like that. And so anytime somebody calls the phone, and this could be for your business, the one little hook of that becomes something that can, you know, anytime somebody calls that. And then there's a 10 second piece that might just have the first half of the phrase. And right. uh, that could be something that anytime that somebody goes to the website and changes a page on the website, they can use that. So it becomes well, more than just one piece, it becomes four different pieces that can be used in a whole lot of different uh, ways. Yeah. You know, and for, for different, and like I say, any of those bits of lyrics may become new branding songs that can be used. Yeah, I think people well. psychologically recognize sound more than they recognize, you know, because unless you're IBM and Microsoft and Apple, you know, you're a small company, you don't have really a brand, but sounds people really connect with and they remember. Well, I think, it, I mean, it's almost proven, in fact, that, you know, sounds are even better than, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but right. people will remember sounds. You know, there are people with um, autism, there are people with, um, you know, uh, Alzheimer's disease who, you know, get brought back because they're listening to songs that they remember. Somebody oh, sings yeah. this song, they can't remember the name of their, you know, their spouse or their family you know, members. But right. if they hear a song from 50 years ago that they knew and still in there can sing it, they remember and they can sing the whole song along. You know? so yeah. It's it's a proven that you know I mean so you know this it's so it's much more memorable. And um and if you know you're using this like said when somebody comes to your website or to you know calls your phone and the first thing they hear on waiting is this little two second or ten second piece that's what they're going to be associating your company with and they might right. be remembering that little bit of music because i'm writing pop music which is you know specifically meant to be catchy and you know, right or like you know what i mean sure so you know so they might that's the beginning of your funnel you know, in a certain way, and it can be yeah. the beginning of your funnel everywhere else that you're doing uh, any kind of advertising. And people definitely remember those little you know things like a McDonald's when I right uh, I mentioned before. So, um, you know, it's a it's a definite way of getting uh, people to recognize and, and remember your brand.
Now, do you find that business owners are harder to work with than performers, music people, or easier? I think it's almost the same. Oh, it's almost I mean, the same. You know, I mean, I'm I'm aiming for the same kind of uh, perfection every time. Right. And I, you know, anything I do, I put out there has to be you know something that uh, both parties are going to want to use for a long, long time. You know I mean? Right. And hopefully, with a singer, you know, or whatever, a singer rapper or something. They're going to be, uh, you know, hopefully singing this song for the rest of their life, and they're the ones that have to go on stage and sell that, you know, not really sell it, but you know, give a great performance of that song and still be behind it a hundred percent, you know, especially if it goes big for them. Because sure. there's a lot of artists, you know, they, you know, they're very famous artists who talk about do they want to sing their songs? Does they, you know David Bowie want to sing Changes? He's not around anymore, but does he right. want to sing a song that made him famous in 1976? You know, yeah. in the year 2002. But of course, the audience is going sing that song, right? Because <laughs> they recognize, please. yeah, because they recognize it and they love it. That's why they became fans of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the same thing for companies who are trying to find something. You know, and unless they're going to do something, like I said, the events, the special events where it's something new, uh, you know, a keynote speaker. A keynote speaker could have a uh, particular, you know, if they're, they have, you know, one thing that they do normally, then, right. you know, you can give them an all-purpose kind of song that really represents them. The same way with a company. If they have a particular thing that they do, you can come up with a song that they can use for 10 years. But each year they may have an annual you know, meeting or a conference or something like that that brings all kinds of people together, and they may have a very specific theme for that. And so, you know, we can get into something that's very specific for that as well. So keynote speakers can come to me and have their specific, you know, their one thing that they utilize all the time, but a very specific one for uh, in a, in a keynote speech, you know, that's, uh, that's for, you know, for one particular Got it. Um, you know, year. Or yeah. Event, you know. So you said you've been, you've been working with the business community for about two, three years now, you said? Yeah, but, yeah, almost three years. Ago. How did that come about? Did it did you fall into it, or did you like, oh, well, we can do this for businesses? I just, yeah, I mean, it was something that somebody had mentioned, and I thought this could be very interesting, and uh, you know, excuse me, lucrative, <laughs> right? No, you know what I mean, like you know, and you know what yeah. I mean, like you know, and musicians by themselves, record companies have some sort of you know clout and some sort of budget, but musicians by themselves. Are not that you know well right. not and, all of them and, right you know, not all of them you know what i mean and so you know to be able to work with them uh is something that i love to do but you know i mean this is like i say almost the same process and for me almost the same kind of thing that i'm doing and i'm right. telling somebody's story in a way so it's satisfying for me and i get to do music that i love so it, it, it kind of came in as something i started up at the end of 2019, and then hey, 2020 came along, and right. it became something that became my major focus because musicians were not doing these things anymore, and were not, you know, being were not able to uh, do some of the recordings that we were having set up. For the, you know, there was an artist I was working, right. artist I was working with in Germany, an artist I was working with in Italy. We had everything set up for March of 2020. And, and everything, everything shut down. Everything shut down, and they had no gigs anymore. And right. It wasn't something that was feasible for them anymore. So all of a sudden, I'm talking to you know businesses, and some of them are essential, and some of them right. never slept a bit. You know, never stopped. You know, for a beat. You know, pun intended. Yeah. Uh, you know, during the pandemic, and kept on going, and some of them got stronger. You know, yeah. I mean, during the pandemic, just because of the fact that they were, you know, yeah, what industry they're in and whatever, you know, they're whatever. resilient and they pivoted, whatever, right? Yeah, and they were available and they were still uh, considered, you know, something that was essential. So their business actually you know, grew. And yeah. so, um, so that's been, you know, something that's interesting. And, uh, and of course, with all the Zoom meetings and all of the networking that's gone on, um, I find myself having done almost more of that. Uh, during yeah. this particular time because everybody has either been off work or had time to do this and right. because of Zoom and that advent of all these new networking events. 
Yeah, you just jump from meeting to meeting to meeting. It yeah, was easy. Exactly. I can meet with four people from around yeah. the world in the same in day. And right. I, you know, it might have taken me, you know, four months to do that in live events in Nashville to yeah. meet people at, you know, the old school event. So yeah. that has been hyper and hyper accelerated. And right. So I found myself meeting all these people. And, and you could do work for people around the world now without even leaving your house almost. I always your have studio. I yeah. have been for 10 years, actually. Oh, the, world, okay. the world caught up. I've been working Got with, it. and I just mentioned those people in Italy, but also South Africa, um, you know what I mean, like Australia, um, anyway, like just all over India. Like I've right. been, for about the last 10 years, I've been doing projects around the world. Online? Skype. It was, you know, it was mostly Skype, Skype, right. I was going to say that. What, what was there? WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Yeah, well, WhatsApp, WhatsApp has video conference capabilities? Yes. So I've been writing, I write songs on WhatsApp with people for the last seven years or so, because almost everybody in Europe and Asia was Right, WhatsApp. they use WhatsApp, right. So that was something, and then Zoom just you know, came up, and then there are alternatives to Zoom as well, you know, including FaceTime. And other right, ones. meetings now, and Google yeah. uh, Google yeah. Meets or Hangouts or whatever it's exactly. called. Exactly, so yeah. I mean, so that's become much, and all the people who are now doing online businesses are starting to get it. Because they didn't yeah. realize that I was, you know, this is something I've been doing for the longest time because I, you know, don't want to be uh, held down to just people who are in Nashville. Right. I can be working with people from all around, uh, you know, who speak different languages and stuff like that, et cetera. So it's, you know, so it's a wonderful right. thing. Technology yeah. is a wonderful thing for getting these things done. Yeah, it's definitely expanded. I was talking to a guy this morning who's in the, uh... You know, he's in uh, digital marketing and things like that. And he's able to now work with people all over when before, you know, it wasn't really online like it is nowadays. And and it, that's, I guess, that's a silver lining to the pain and suffering that some people went through during the during the pandemic. You know, the world's become a much smaller place. I've been able to interview people all over the world on the podcast. I never would have done that. It would always been local. I never sure. really thought about even doing it, you know, online. Yeah, and now I mean it seems to be almost you know for people maybe in, you know not going back to brick and mortar uh, establishments and stuff like that. Yeah, in some cases, uh, right? They'll never go back, you know, and they may never, or they're at least doing um, you know uh, a couple days at their establishment, and they're coming right. by having more time with their family, and so I think that's you know going to become the norm. Uh, yeah, in a certain way, uh, you know, and conventions. I've been doing stuff for conventions, and they're coming back because I don't think you can ever quite get back the same. But I don't think that people are going to, you know, do the five million dollars and bringing two hundred people from Japan to New York. Right. They may. They may still, but they're not going to do it three times a year. Right. You know I mean, for for a company when they realize that they can still do, uh, you know, hybrid conferences and stuff like that. Yeah, where they could have fifty people on a Zoom call from around the world and they have to spend money to fly them in, and put them up in you know hotels right. and all those meals things. and the whole thing. Yeah, and the whole thing, and every night going up to a different place to you know to get to the right. Room. Then they're not in the and office, and yeah. Yeah. So those things. So I mean, I imagine that a lot of those places um, will be. You know, downscaling, and I, you know, the the, I guess the projection is that some of the downtown areas and the places where a lot of these places, you know, brick and mortar places are, will start to uh, have another um, fall in certain. Yeah, areas. sure. As, There's going to be a change in maybe more residential living, I guess, hybrid yeah. type of stuff. Now, Nashville's a hot town, though. There's Nashville's like one hot. Of the, like maybe one, two, or three in the nation as far as people coming per day. And yeah. that's been for the last two years. So yes, it's filling up like crazy. And yeah. there are, you know, new Amazon companies as well as of course people coming to do music as well. Right. It's not just music, even though it's yeah. the music capital of the world. I, I read one some maybe it was before the pandemic. There was a point where there were more sky cranes in Nashville than like anybody, any other place except like Dubai. There was yeah. so much building going on in that city. They, they, but I mean, in a certain way, when I came from Toronto to live here, uh, yeah. you know, they say that Nashville was the biggest little town you ever, 
you know, the biggest right because everybody's from yeah. another place, right? Well, yeah, but it's also because it's still kind of like you know, you do something you know bad or whatever, and the word gets right. Out. You know what I mean? It's kind of like everybody's your, your aunt and everybody's you know your neighbors are all watching. They all so, hear you know, about it. Yeah, it's a community in a certain way, in a small community. So there's some really nice things about that as well. You know, yeah. in terms of getting to know people and um, you know, having people to work with and stuff that are sure. very loyal in a certain way. And, um, yeah. You know, so there's there's that, but like I say, it is becoming huge. In, in, in other yeah. Ways. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, All right, I'm getting off the topic. Of that, I don't mean that. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. But, but, yeah. No, I love, I could talk about Nashville for a long time, but um, I, w- I was going to ask you, though, about your business. So, so and even on the uh, on the composer side, how do you run your business? Like, do you have strategic marketing plans? Do you just, you know, you know so many people that people keep calling you for business? Do you, I mean, what do you do? Well, I do have repeat business and I do my best to make sure that like I, I do a great job. Every yes, time. they so come back, repeat, sure. Because they come back. But I am doing all kinds of outgoing stuff and I reach out to major CEOs and people with, you know, 500 plus companies. We're talking Warren Buffett. We're yeah. talking people like Urban Magic Johnson's Twins keynote speakers, and all the people like you know a a list speakers like you know, the companies that uh, represent those speakers. Just in the last couple of weeks, I've gone to uh, MMA fighters, you know, and uh, uh-huh. you know what I mean, and all the people from. Uh, um, you know, and an uh, MMA fighter, what are you doing? You do you are you are you. Are you Coming ma- up with creating music song. for like when they walk into the yeah for when they yeah. walk once you know I mean for like Rocky time do... exactly <laughs> yeah I like exactly that. and you know yeah, there's so many some of them using some other you know and they're right. usually using a hip hop thing or some kind of like right you're like you, you know, should imagine have your own dragon, music. but you know but I'm giving them a new a possibility now the other thing that we do I mean and then you know this is a, another aspect of it you can either tell a story. Yeah, you know what I mean, like very detailed story. Like you know, there's a guy David Meltzer who's out there, and you know he yeah, makes I know it David very, Meltzer. Yeah, so he you know he makes it very obvious that he, at a certain point in his twenties, he made a couple million dollars. Then he lost it all. Then he made it again, and then he lost it. And then now he's got his trajectory that's doing very well for him. And right. He he you know tries to give people that kind of confidence and knowing you know how, you know. Not to be a frightened that it could go down, that it can go up, but you know, trying to give you that whole sort of his whole background that's part of his experience that you know, right. edu- educates you. So you know, you can tell all those stories. You know what I mean, like that, and go into the you know the ballad of that, the ballad of Walmart, the ballad of right. your company, and you know, be very specific. And to some extent, that might be only interested to the people, you know, who are, you know, Joe in accounting and this person in, you know, uh, human resources. Or whatever, right. You know I mean? And that's fine, too. And it can be great for a, a year end meeting you know, as a conference or something like mm-hmm. that. You know? But the other way to do it is like a pop song. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, when you are. Uh, you're just talking metaphorically. So if you're right. going to do something for somebody who's doing finance, it's like fintech okay. or something like that. If I'm yeah. going to do something, or somebody who is doing insurance, you know, do you want to do something that's specific to those insurance policy policies, excuse me, and their price points and the sort of drudging, you know, everyday little bits of those things, or do you want to talk about something like? You know the way you're in good hands with all state, or some sort of way of talking about the confidence, the feeling right. somebody gets when they do business with you. Right. And so all those things. So in a metaphorical, just like a pop song, you write a song that doesn't even mention the name of your of your company or could, but you know what I mean. It's not like a jingle, but more like a song. It's a beautiful song that you know you can use and almost sell it or put it on the radio. I mean, even like that, you know what I mean? Right. The quality is that good when I you know, deliver it. And right. so, you know, so you've got this song that's going to talk about, you know, all those feelings of your core values. And yeah. so, and how people f- feel. So that's, you know, another way I prefer it, but it's obviously it's anybody's call who I'm working with as to which way we decide to go. Now, what what does a guy like Dave David Meltzer? How does he? Did you do work for him? We're still in negotiations. Yes. Oh, okay. So, how would he use made to order music? He's like a basically he's, a 
speaker, yes. right? He's a, he's a motivational guy, coach. And he's got a foundation. He's got well. a foundation so too. Okay. as well. I mean, there are other people I work with. Uh, you know, I'm not going to name all of them. who no. have found foundations and stuff like that. So those people, you know what I mean, have... So there's like, you know, a, a piece that can go for every day that, like I said, you know, really hits their core values, hits what they're doing. And um, and then if they're doing a specific keynote speech, then we can do something that really addresses that. Um, you know, okay. you know like for, for everyday use, any of these people, and like I say, the keynote speakers, most of them have uh, a particular thing about mindset or about one thing or another, and that's how, you know, we get to that. And that's the most important Got it. thing that people that people notice about you and know you for and hire you for and what are people looking come to your company for and you know what's that about and so you know we do this in a certain way again not necessarily a jingle it right. might have their name their name in there but it's not going to be like six seven one. right of course you know I, I'm trying to get a little deeper than that as well as uh, just you know musically really lovely. Yeah. Now, did you approach yeah. Meltzer's people or David Meltzer or were you referred to him or had you find I, him? I approached, I approached them and we've had conversations. So you prospected him. Yeah. So I prospected him because he was one of the keynote speaker people. Right. But it, you know, but it, you know, it goes on. There are more people I've also done. I do events for other, you know, uh, special events for like weddings and stuff like that. And fifth, right. Wedding anniversaries. Those are the kind of things that definitely use the detail. Right. If you're right. But are you prospecting like wedding planners and people like yes, that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I'm right. Really, so I've gotten to all the major event planners and yeah. wedding planners across the world. Now, of course, they took an incredible hit during you know to, uh, to yeah for the sure and are just getting back into doing either hybrid or doing live events right but I, you know but i definitely have you know reached out to all of those people as well because they're you know right up my alley and um you know yeah and it's, well they're it's, coming back people are starting to get married again you know or, or no, people are getting, they were still getting married. married they just weren't having big weddings or anything I was uh, attended a couple actually that were backyard weddings where I was on Zoom yeah. watching the event. Oh yeah. Yes, I, 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 yeah. yeah. Love doesn't stop, right? Love doesn't stop. Keeps going, so, absolutely. Okay, so but your strat. It sounds like your marketing strategy is more like you'll 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 target a company or something like that as opposed to like general advertising, right? Because that's probably yeah. not as productive. Yeah, and it's probably more expensive and right. um, you know as well. Um, but I want you know it's some it's the same as anything else. You you know hit up a hundred people and only a certain percentage of them get back to you, and then a certain percentage closes. Um, you know, yeah, particular right, of course. But you know, again, if you're doing this, you know, the other thing is that again for advertising, it usually takes with eight times for anybody to have any kind of recognition for you. Right, and so you know you send these letters out and um, you know any other kind of way that you're doing got to keep going yeah you know and i of course have a youtube channel of course have a uh, you know website to send people to and when i do things like this or any other web you know podcast sure. that i do i send out links when i've done this stuff so that people know that i'm doing these different things and they can hear the interviews and get an idea of the process again through you know, I have a legitimacy of doing this with you know, people like yourself. Um, right. You know what I mean? Or when I'm, you know, when I finish this, or I just did the, you know, the thing for Podfest, like I said, in Orlando in May. So I made sure to get all the photos and stuff like that. And then did a little um, thing of my, you know, of the song that I did for them with all the stuff from, you know, the pictures of the event. And the people who are there so, uh, so that there's something online and then right. i can send it to all the clients and say here's what i just did for these people and when i do the sport show thing you know in monaco there's all these you know 200 plus um, broadcasters etc and all these people including the nba and including the pga and all these people so now i'm getting in front of them there but i also have all the names of those people who are going to be going to that so if i don't hear from them after i've done it i can all also hit them up on every single one of those keynote speakers as well and right. say, oh, I just did the thing for your event and here's the link to the um, you know again if you don't remember the music here's the link right and, and you so, got a little bit of a unique niche I mean how many guys are out there doing what you do from the business standpoint is there a lot I, I mean 
I think there are some who are getting into it so yeah. more and more, but like uh, I don't know when I'm in certain circles uh, and doing a lot of the networking and stuff that I'm doing, I'm sure I'm doing it. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a whole voiceover community. There's a couple of these websites, Voice123 or Voice Jungle or whatever it's called. And you could hire people to do your voiceover for your answering sure. machine or for whatever. Sure. But I, I didn't, you know, I don't think people think about what you do, at least for entrepreneurs, like small business owners, you know? Well, now, what's the, the, what's the creative process? Like if you, you know, how long does it take to put a song together? I assume then you have to present it, right? And then they might want some changes or this and that. So how many clients can you take on way. it? No, yeah, it's not. Well, I mean, we usually take care of everything from the beginning. We have consultation. Okay. Uh, with, you know, with one person. So you're pretty more. accurate. So we just, you know, and we go to, you know, again, talking about the core values, talking about how, you know, or if we want that to change or anything like that. And then, you know, just sort of have a confab, um, maybe once or twice to make sure that we know exactly what we're talking about and how we're going to do it. And then I ask them specifically, you know, do you want this to be? And they may say, I want it to be R&B. So, well, that's a very large thing. So I want it to be R&B that sounds like Ariana Grande. Well, in 2012 or this album, and then we get to this album from this year. So you really go, narrow it and down. And then we go, well, there's 10, 12 songs and they're all R&B and they're different. One has a pizzicato string in it. And another thing is old school, you know, kind of vintage sounds and stuff like that. Let's figure out what we want. So usually it's down to two, a Taylor Swift song and a this song, or you know, a Bruno Mars or a this, you know, whatever. And it's like very specific. And I'm not going to copy. It's just there to, you know, I want to be on the same playlist as that. So right. it, it, it educates and informs my way of writing it, the way I'm going to write a melody for it, the way the rhythms are going to be, how, uh, I mean, I'm not going to get, um, profane in a you know with an artist I made you know, right allow that kind of thing but for a you know company not necessarily but there's a certain way of speaking in you know modern hip hop as opposed to a different style of music you know? right so if they're already saying I love that and I want to sound like you know uh, this or that you know I ha I did some stuff with Grant Cardone for instance and his stuff is always about you know uh, it's kind of the boss and it's right. you know, and it's always, you know, so gangster rap kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Okay. In a certain way. And it's kind of just that feel because it, you know, has a, a kind of a, a certain thing that, you know, he right. wants to be associated with in that sort yeah. of way. And so everybody else may have some other way that they're doing that. And when we choose that, then we have a way of keeping track of, you know, I know whether I'm going to get in with the market. And I know, you know, I know that you're going to be, I'm going to be happy and you're going to be happy because we're going, you know, I know when I haven't reached it, I want to have. So you basically work them through the whole process all the way down the ladder until you're pretty sure that you're close to what it is that they're looking for. And then we, then I do it. And then I go back you, and I'm either writing with, you know, with another person or by myself. Right. Um, you know, but I thought like, you know, again, you know, Grammy nominated songwriters here in Nashville that I can work with as a co writer, for instance. And yeah. then we go and do that. And then I, um, you know, do tracks for it and get all that together. And then um, I find the best, you know, possible talent that's very specific to that style and, you know, that musical style that's going to really represent the song well. And so I find those people and record them and then, you know, tune them and do all those things that's beautiful and then right. you know mix and master the thing and then get it back to the you know uh, the, the, uh, the client. And, right. Um, so you know it's a pretty much that process every time. Um, but it's an involved process. So how many projects are you working on at any given time? Well it's I mean I can be working on a few, you know, two or three or you know, four at the same time. It's a matter of, you know, uh it usually takes, you know, maybe a week to get the song written. You know, I mean, I often say, oh, you know, three, three after weeks, you've after three, you've taken them through the process. Yeah, after we've talked about to have the meetings and say, here's what it's going to be. And I'm usually coming up with an idea because that's how certain usually songwriting is in a session. You know what I mean? Where you're sitting about right things and, occur to you. You know, right. things occur. And I hey, hey, this could be the title. What do you think of this title? Or you know, if I'm going to meet with them the next day, I'm already you know scouring through all of their media and going, hey, I've got three ideas for titles 
what do you think of this? And I mean, right. I'm thinking, thinking it could be, this is hitting me like a, this kind of song. You know, that. What do you think of that? Got and it. if somebody comes, you know, if I do get lucky enough to say work with a, a Warren Buffett who's in his 80s now, maybe. Yeah. And he likes, say, 30s swing jazz which I could do something, you know, you know, you know, I would still recommend that maybe there's a trap beat or some sort of, you know, modern kind of thing there because pop music is about four to 94. Right, you want to appeal to, to a larger years. audience. So, so yeah. you want his grandkids or his great grandkids to go, you know, I love your papa. I love right. that. What I love your, your theme song, the one with your, your, your website. You know, that you yeah. Have. So, uh, you know, so I may, you know, do something as, like, you know, a swing jazz thing or something like that, you know, that maybe has a clarinet in it or something like that. But right. I might put a hip hop beat underneath it just to, you know, and a rapper in it or something like that, just to make it modern and something that's, you know, forward thinking. Um, you know, okay. future thinking because that's uh, something you know. and again I would discuss that beforehand just to make right, sure of course. That that's cool with the people who are you know, doing that and it can go with you know especially podcasters but anybody else can do a theme song that's not doesn't have words so it right. could be an instrument yeah. as well which still requires uh, you know them thinking about a particular style of music and their favorite song in that way of course. because that's your brand and you want it to be something that you, know, you feel represents you, you know I mean? right so, um so if they like heavy metal that's cool too you know if they like you know all those different things and if they want a classical kind of piece that you know that i'm well studied in that i can do something that you know again for their when they come on, on their keynote or something like that they want something that sounds more um, right stately and classical i can do that as well you know all kinds of samples and things like now what it, now since you don't really work for anybody you're you're an entrepreneur you're on your own you're looking for your own sure. business what do you what do you find the most challenging about being on your own about running your own business especially in the music industry well, well i mean like any entrepreneur just doing it all yourself i mean yeah. i don't mind doing the stuff where i'm writing the song uh doing all the tracks um you know hiring the talent doing all the mixing and mastering that's all right you know that's a job in itself but when you have to go to all those and i only mentioned a few of the places that i'm marketing to but when you have to have a cycle per month or every you know, while and going to all those people you know, and doing that sort of stuff because i'm not all of it just works on mailchimp or you know right, auto of automation because you know with musicians it's like some of them are on Facebook or some of them are on their websites and some right. of them are on email. So you can't get it all into one place and have a, you know, a co coordinated send and stuff. So just that kind of stuff and having to keep on all of it. Uh, right. Sometimes, you know, sometimes keeps gets the weird. pipeline full, right? So you're always making pitches and working them just, at some point, right? Chasing them down. Yeah. And also, you know, writing new, you know, when you are doing that, they're all new, you know, obviously new emails and new little quick pitches and stuff like yeah. that. So um so you know so that's not again not you know the thing that I fear, but it's just having enough time in the day to be able to do that. So I find you know the music part of it is you know has uh, improved in a certain way because I'm so focused when I get to it, you know, after doing all this other entrepreneurship stuff. Right. That, you know, I mean, wow, it's like bang, just happy bang. to be there, right? And and you know, and I'm focused and it comes together really quickly that way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, so that's a good thing. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So do you see yourself doing more of the uh, made to order music company you want to still grow and grow that or you're you're going to stick with more composing or it's kind of a mix i, I, th I think it's going to mix you like them both gonna, I, and i think they're going to feed each other because like i okay. say i am i'm writing pop songs anyway uh and there is another thing that you may mention here uh in terms of the process i you know as far as um contractually concerned uh the people who get these songs Right. Can use can use them in every single way they want, you know, anywhere in any way they want, 
including selling it, like I said, putting it on the radio. Oh, they have a full li unlimited they, license? They own it? I, I, they own it, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it might be a license that might be you might perpetual, add to get to no, the, right. To get, yeah, to get to use that or, or it's bumped up in the price to include all of those things. That's one okay. thing. But I still own it as well. Yeah, and it was I your cannot, work. I cannot use it for another business if it's for a business or if it's right. for a convention i you know that's the proviso is that i can't you know use it for that again but i can put it in a mood but i can the artist who is you know singing the song can put it out and we can sell it there and if it happens to go big you know i mean or you know for instance it's a great song and i pitch it to another company like Def Jam Records or whatever, and Rihanna wants to do it. Right. I mean, imagine how that's going to look on your company when you know. I mean, it comes out on the radio. Going to be good. Artist. It's going to be good, right. and it's going to be good if it gets in a movie. You know what I mean? For a placement in the sync license thing. Right. You know, for me, I'll be getting. You know, that comes to me, not them, not to the company. So a performer could maybe use it, but not another business. Yeah, exactly. That's just or you so can I'm use not, it for promotional purposes for your yeah, own all, yeah, all I want. You know what I mean? So that's so I'm holding on to it there. So it's you know does get a longer life for me, but in that way it does enhance the life of right. it for the people who have it. You know what I mean? Um, for their business. You know I mean? so, yeah. So here's a good legal question. So how do you how do you control all that? Who writes your contracts? Have you done them yourself? How do you because your business is all intellectual property. Right? right, you have to protect your own properties. So you write the contract and you provide them to them to sign. So they, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of your simple. engagement. Yeah, basically, my engagement. I mean, it's part of just like you know. I mean, it's part of what I tell them. I mean, it doesn't even have to be necessarily a contract if it's agreed upon on the phone or if it's agreed upon after in an email. I mean, that's already been proven as a um, right you know, proof of ownership or whatever before, as far as like. Um, you know, intellectual property. If it's been sent in an email and they agree, I say, please just get back to me and say, do you agree to all of this? Right. And please say, confirm. Sure. Please confirm. That is fine. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to go deeper than that. Right. Um, and we've, you know, we've already talked or had a handshake if it happens to be in the same city, and um, you know, and we go from there. But I do put that down, you know, right from the beginning, so everybody knows. And if that's a problem, and they want to buy me out. It's going to be a lot more money. Any so, any issues with past clients that violated really. any agreement? Yeah, no, not not well, yet. I mean, they're not going to be not going to be they're not going to be violating anything because I'm giving them a free reign. I'm the one, you know. I would be right. You would they, be the one violating. The one they, right. They, you know, if they were worried about it from the other way, I would be the one violating if I actually went ahead and Got it. used it for another company. So, right. You know, so I'm not going to do that. And I want, you know, good relationships with all these people. And when they, you know, decide to do a new version of their song or they can change their business a bit or expand or do something and maybe change what their business is about, I can do their next theme song. Yeah. And how does the process, the pricing of the, of the process work? Is it, is there a fee for figuring it out and then it's based on no, the length oh, it's of the all, song? It's all, no, no, it's, well, yeah, it's a little different for an instrumental and for a little card, you know, I mean, just a little bit less than if I'm writing lyrics for the whole thing. Right. Because those lyrics, like I said, become, you know, part of your brand new slogans, et cetera. Um, but, Got you know, it. there's a little bit of a difference between it. And, um, and I must admit that I do, you know, there's a difference between, say, uh, a solopreneur hiring me for this right and a person who has a 500 plus company right because well they have more resources too they right? have more so. resources and plus the fact that they would you know they expect to pay and and most of those companies because of what i'm really offering is what any kind of uh branding or ad agency would be doing i mean and so right. an ad agency to do what i'm doing would cost you millions for a year to hold them in your back pocket. And then they would hire me for all these thousands of dollars, et cetera, to do right. this, to write the song and stuff yeah. like that as part of, you know, and they would still be taking a fee for, you know, answering yeah, they to mark what it I'm, up. to mark right. it up, to be able to get beyond what they're hiring me for to do, to give to the client. They're still, you know, for just the, the fact that they're there and calling me to do this would be like, you know, you know et cetera. So I am doing this for, you know, pretty much offering what that is, you know, a whole 
advertising. You yeah. Because like I say, you're getting these little two second things that you're using in a different place, you know, on your phone. And you're getting right. these slogans. No, it's like getting new logos and stuff for your company. It's the same yeah, type so of thing. I mean it's a huge branding part. So um, you know, so I'm I, I think I'm doing a large service for people. Sure, absolutely. I, I know I am. Yeah, of course. All right. So so we're coming to the end. So tell me if somebody wants to learn more about you, get a hold of you, connect with you, how would they do it? It's the best way to reach you on um, social they, media or something. They can um, reach me at howiemoskovich.com, which is my okay. They can go to Howie Moskovich, I think it's Howie Moskovich Music at uh, YouTube. You know, uh -huh. a channel there they can just put my name into google and all kinds of things will come up um and they can go to howiemoskovich.gmail.com and reach out to me you know, directly very good well so, howie i can't thank you enough if you have any last minute advice share it now to anybody who's listening um and you know i know it's late on a friday afternoon so i appreciate you spending time uh sharing your story thanks for having me uh plant your seeds early <laughs> That's the best advice I have.